Hey, hey, everybody, and we are back for another episode of Boss Your Business. Today, we are taking it a little bit a different route, simply because Julie actually is not full-time entrepreneur. Let's put it that way. You will hear more about this today. Um, to introduce Julie initially, first of all, she is one of my besties. Love her to pieces. If you do not know her yet, it's time you get to meet her. Julie is an award-winning social media strategist with a passion for building community with live video. Julie, you have over 15 years of experience in the digital marketing. You are the social media manager for StreamYard, managing 25,000 plus members in their community. Damn. You have worked with Social Media Examiner, the Small Business Administration, and countless others. Um, she has a vast array of experience, including live video production, social media, and community management. Shows kind of like at the size of StreamYard's community. She must know what she's doing. And the list goes on. You are a dedicated community leader with a passion for teaching others how they too can build a great business through their social media channels and grow their communities with live video. Hi, Julie. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. I get to hang out with you today. I know. This you know, is going to be love fun. hanging out with you. So guys, everybody listening in and watching, the reason I wanted to bring Julie on today is because she loves her job. She loves StreamYard. She loves working at Harpen. And I wanted to make sure that my audience knows bossing your business doesn't mean you have to be a full-time entrepreneur. It doesn't mean you have to step out there and build your own business. And Julie is in a perfect situation there to share this experience because you've been a business owner before you joined StreamEd, isn't it? That is correct. I did. I had my own agency um, and I've actually had some other businesses along the way as well. So how did Julie get where she is today? What's your story? Oh my gosh. It's an odd journey. Um, I did Those are not the most fun ones. <laughs> they are. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Well, Did I we have ever... little. I, when, I, when I was little, I thought I was going to be a fighter pilot. That, that never worked out. Um, it turns out you can't be four foot 11 and be a fighter pilot. You're too short. So that dream got scrapped. Uh, and at about that point, I was in high school and I really didn't know what direction I wanted to take. Uh, I ended up taking a few different technical careers, uh, getting some certificates. I did cosmetology for a while. Turns out that was not my thing. I went to the Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. <laughs> Talk about diversity. Yeah, one extreme to the other. Uh, <laughs> there's a few more extremes in there. Uh, so I went to the Motorcycle Mechanics Institute in uh, Orlando, Florida, and I started working for Harley Davidson. I when, didn't know that. Yeah. I worked in their service department, but never actually as a technician, even though that's what I was certified for. I worked as a um, service writer. So when you bring your bike in, we're the person who, your front desk type person there that deals with Got all it. of that. As I moved to another dealership, when I moved to Wichita, Kansas, I started working in their e-commerce department. And this was the early days of e-commerce. So everything was being done on mm -hmm. eBay. There weren't even websites where you were ordering at that time. And I helped them set up their very first website with actual web ordering where people could order. We would walk down to the shop floor, grab whatever item they bought for their bike, whether it was a t-shirt or an accessory, we would package it up. We would have it available for them to come pick up in the store or we would ship it to them. And uh, oh. this was the super early days of, of e-commerce. Oh my God, yeah, I remember those. Where it's <laughs> like everybody was selling on eBay and using them as their storefront. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really started to enjoy this digital side of things as it was kind of transitioning. As I left there, I was trying to figure out what was my next direction, really what was, what was that next point. Mm -hmm. So ended up trying to start to pursue and look into marketing. And I started a family at the same time. So while I was starting my family, I kind of stepped away from school, stepped away from the marketing side of things and focused on family and being mom with a newborn. And I needed a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a hobby. I needed a hobby, really. Um, and what that hobby <laughs> led to was an accidental custom cake business. Uh, huh. and I 
creative outlet uh, for all these other things that I had that I had done over the years. Uh, I grew up, my aunt was a custom cake uh, decorator. And so I guess I kind of inherited that piece of things and I started my own custom cake business. That was the very, very early days of Facebook business pages. Oh and my God. Instagram. And I built my entire business on Facebook and on Instagram. I did not have a website. I had nothing other than social media. And I was like, oh my gosh, there is a world of things that can be done with this tool. You, anybody can start their own business. Anybody can yep. do this aspect and build it and grow it. And it was so fascinating to watch and to learn. Um, yeah, I, I like to call it like the wild, wild west days because there was no, uh, there were no coaches coaching on this. There were no mentors. It was all fresh. It's like you, you throw spaghetti at the wall and see what works kind That's of thing. It's like we all, nobody of us had any idea how to do this no. thing. It's like Facebook had just moved out of being a student portal into being a social network. Yeah, it was it was bizarre, mm -hmm. but so interesting to be a part of. Um, and through that, really built that social media aspect of things. And so once my son went to school and was out of the house and I was ready to go back to work, I went back down the marketing path and I was like, okay, I think I really have found this niche. I want to go into the social media side of things. Was able to get a job at a marketing agency locally mm -hmm. and worked for them for a couple of years, building on as their social media manager. Uh, for a while, I was their only social media manager and was able to really hone and build that. Kind of it was, again, trial by fire. It was yeah. figuring out as you went. It was going, we're going to throw something at a wall and see if it sticks. Because uh, there's still, I mean, this was 2015. There still really wasn't much going on out there. There were a few influencers. There were a few people up and coming in the space that were starting to speak on it. Conferences were starting to happen. Social media marketing world. Places like that that were starting to build and grow. And you were going, there's people that I can learn from and I can, mm -hmm. I can figure something out. Um, but I think even they were all still figuring it out as they were yeah. going along. So I had that job for two years and then I left them and opened my own agency and said, Ooh. okay, I can do this. I had my own agency uh, for about two years and through COVID, as everything tra transitioned and shifted, uh, I also shifted uh, from having a business partner to she had a life change and stepped away from the business. So it was like all of this big transition all at once. And I really stepped back and I was like, okay, we're going to reevaluate the direction that my business is going to go. And I'm going to kind of find a new niche and hone in on this. What kind of customers am I looking for? What kind of places am I after? And while I was figuring all of those pieces out, I got approached with an offer from StreamYard. Ooh. And it was an offer that after I really looked back and forth on, I was like, I don't think I can turn this offer down. And it was hard because I'd been my own boss now for two years. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, but I don't want to be tied to eight to five and having to show up in an office and not being able to go to my kids' school functions and not being able to be there for my schedule and my time because that had become so valuable to me. So I had to really look at this and go, are they going to be able to meet my needs, but also give me what I'm looking for? Um, and after we broke it all down, it turned out that there are companies out there that will meet these needs and will give you what you're looking for. You just have to be very selective about finding them. They will give you the flexibility the chance to say, if you have something with your kid, put it on the calendar and go do that. Go be there. You know, you're not, you're not working an eight to five job. You're working, get the job done, but take the time that you need when you need it. And I think, I know StreamYard was already focused like that before COVID, but I think especially COVID has shown companies that they simply need to be more flexible. People are done just being working machines and working for retirement. That's always one of mine's where I'm like, my, my past experience has shown you might not make it to retirement. So you better live now and not be a nine to five robot robot that doesn't get to take the weekend off. So 
it's been interesting for us that know a couple of companies, StreamYard included, that always has given their employees that freedom and that flexibility. I'm like, as long as you're getting your job done, I don't care if you show up at six o'clock in the morning or if you show up at nine o'clock in the morning. And it's it's been fun watching other companies finally adjusting to that too, yeah. where it's like, this whole hustle mentality, don't get me wrong. There is room for the hustle mentality. If you have a startup, there's certain times where you need to crunch down and just get the job done. Don't give me wrong. But overall, seeing how the, the corporate perception to employees has changed. Yes. And it's like our conversations, especially um, with your experience on StreamYard, there was a time when was a, a year ago or something where I was down and I was considering going to get a job. And it's like, I've been self-employed for how long? Yeah. 20, 20 years. I don't even know. And like, I haven't had a boss in ages. <laughs> so hearing that there are companies out there that allow you to pretty much function like a self-employed person, but have the security of, having a job, having potentially paid time off leave, having sick days, knowing the money that's coming in, that's definitely a difference to being self-employed. Yeah. And it's like, I I know you guys have, have company functions coming up and traveling and all fun stuff where you also get to see uh, your fellow employees and actually make that personal connection. Yes. Guys, this this is the reason why I wanted to bring Julie in because it's like how how StreamYard has been managing their workforce. Head off head off to StreamYard on Harbin. It's been it's been amazing. I truly was blown away as they started to break it down. And one of the things that's great too is not only do I have my job, but I'm able to pursue any of my side passions as mm -hmm. well at the same time. So I'm still able to work on my personal brand. I'm still able to venture out into speaking. Uh, if I wanted to take on clients, I would be able to. Uh, for a while, I did. Uh, one of my coworkers, she still takes on clients. Uh, so we have this ability to then balance it out and to go, how much do I want to work on the extra? How much do I want to just focus on the day-to-day? And I can choose and I can say, okay, this month I might take on an extra project, but you know what? Next month I've got school things for my kid and it's going to be busy. So I'm not going to take on that extra project or I'm going to take a trip. And I think that's, that's one, that's a big thing too, of not being in a non-compete for that matter. Yeah. Like to take it completely all over the edge. Um, so for anybody that doesn't know what a non-compete is, it pretty much means you, the company would be telling you what you are not allowed to do. Non-competes often happen in, in big corporations or when you are a lawyer or something like that, where it's like the non-compete says you are not allowed to take clients with you. You are not allowed to work in this sector you are working in right now. And with you being social media focused at StreamYard, a non-compete potentially could have said, hey, you are not allowed to do anything that does social media. Yeah. So it's nice to see that StreamYard is like, we are secure in ourselves. We know we are bringing you a good position. So go have fun. Go yep. Go do what you want to do because it feeds us back too. Right. Because when you're, when you're promoting social media, you're going to be promoting live video yep. and you're going to turn around and promote the tool you work for naturally. Mm -hmm. So it does. It kind of trickles into this multi-tiered effect. Uh, you know, I love talking and building community. So I speak a lot on building a community with live video. So every time I'm speaking on that, I'm able to promote StreamYard even more. And they appreciate that. So it kind of works hand in hand with each other. And it has that trickle effect because I'm like, let's be honest, we are using StreamYard for the podcast, right? So Julie literally is the one who is like, hey, by the way, did you know we just released a new feature, which trickle down now to me being able to run my podcast how I'm running it. But again, that's a whole nother story. And you will be able to see videos about that on my YouTube channel where you see the whole workflow 
of how I'm using Streamia to make all of this happen and make my life easy and not have to sit there. But actually chat with you in the comment section. So guys, if you are thinking like just because the live show is pre-recorded, no, I'm pre-recording the live show so I can join you in the comment section. Exactly. And with that... You already mentioned there is a lot going on. Sometimes you you take you used to take on a couple more clients. You got the kid and the husband running around. You got travel, all of the things, and then still also doing all the things at Streamyard. Yeah. What are some of the workflows and processes that allow you to be happy, Julie, and go on a Mexico vacation <laughs> last week, a week before, uh, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. So yeah, it was a couple weeks ago, went to Mexico and it was nice. And I was mm-hmm. able to, for the first time ever, um, 100% unplug. Okay. I so forgot I forgot about that. You didn't even have Wi-Fi or anything on that. No, cruise. I, like, I'm not taking it. I'm not doing it. Take my computer. Oh my God. Out. I, I did. I did have some like stress moments uh, leading <laughs> up to while we were still in the hotel before we left the trip. We'll go. <laughs> I can talk about that, but um, I was able to really have everything pre-planned, pre-scheduled, mm-hmm. utilizing my social media. Just I, I plan it all out, and I plan it in Notion. I use their social media calendar template that they have in there to build out my calendar to go. Okay, here's where I'm going to plug everything in. Here's what needs to absolutely go. Once it's kind of mapped out. Then I go and I schedule it through Agora Pulse. Um, I've been using Agora Pulse for mm-hmm. ever. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm sure your audience has heard you talk about yeah. multiple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I started using them in 2017. Um, so it was still the pretty early days of Agora Pulse even. And yeah. uh, so I schedule it all out in there. Then I have um, some team members that are able to help with any of the comment moderation while I'm gone. So our support team helped with all of that. My other marketing team members were able to monitor. It was cyber guys. It was Black Friday. It's and like we- you guys. You guys had a launch going on. When we had a you new were feature on a launch. <laughs> yes, <laughs> new feature launch. Cyber Week, Black Friday, all those things. Uh, and I decided that was a good time to go take a vacation. Perfect. So I, I literally, though, was able to organize everything, have it planned out, plug it all into a Gore Pulse, and then assign things to the right team members. So my support mm-hmm. team members monitored all of the comments. My marketing team member that I work with, she was able to make sure that all of the posts did actually go out, that nothing hiccuped. You know, it's it's digital. It's technology. Yeah. Sometimes something hiccups. Uh, Instagram's one that's notorious for hiccuping. Uh, <laughs> I've noticed, and and things don't schedule the way they should. So and I'm I'm sure she would have also been able to adjust accordingly because launches things change on the fly. I did have to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one thing it was supposed to come out on, I think it was like a Friday morning. Um, at like 8 a.m. is what we had. It, we And I had it scheduled for 10. It was supposed to release 8, so our post was scheduled for 10, and they pushed it back to noon. So yeah. she had to push my post back to later in the day. So she was able to jump right in, adjust everything. But I was able to have all of that pre-planned, pre-set, have the meetings with the right people, leave my computer at home, oh. and walk away. Oh. And and guys, I have how did, never, never how, done that. How did we live before internet? I'm like, we grew up yeah. in in a time where we do remember you come home when, when the lights go on, right? We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have internet. We grew up with this all coming around. And nowadays it's like, I I consciously have to leave the phone in the other room to to do one of those <sighs> okay evie you can do it you do not have to be attached to your phone yeah well and it was funny as i was planning this trip i was telling my coworker, i was like i think i'm gonna still bring the laptop i'm not gonna get the wi-fi on the cruise but i'll have it leading up you know at the hotel leading up to the cruise and then when we get off because i was spending a few days with some family as well once we got off and i said and you know i'll have wi-fi there and everything and she yelled at me she was like <laughs> You dare take that with you. She goes, you're leaving it home. And if I find out you take it, you're in trouble. <laughs> She's uh-huh. like, don't. Um, so I did. I left it. it. It took me a good probably 24 hours to like 
let my nerves settle. Yeah. But once they did, I did so freeing think about it the whole trip. And it was, and it was something that I think we we've gotten ourselves programmed into this mindset of we have to check it. We have to be plugged in, especially those that are entrepreneurs and business owners. Yeah. But if you have the right systems in place, even as a business owner, even as an entrepreneur, then you can walk away from it. You can set up the VA that's going to be helping you while you're gone and hand those tasks off and it is okay. The other thing that I have to remind myself is, yes, my job is very important. Yes, getting a launch correct is very important and getting all those details, you know, and if you're working with clients, it's very important that you're not missing deadlines and things like that happening. But at the end of the day, it is not surgery. We are not transplant surgeons. Nobody is going to die because the post goes out two hours too early because the launch changed. Yes. It's not, the world is not going to come crashing to a halt for that. And and so it's something else that it's taken me years to train myself on and to go, I am a perfectionist and I know I'm a perfectionist and I pride myself on being a perfectionist, but I also have to go, the world will not end Mm -hmm. if perfectionism does not happen. And that's, that's been a big one for me as of late. And I mentioned it in one of the past episodes too, where it's like, my clients have a life. They do have a business. They take about 24 hours to respond to an email if on, on a regular. So they don't necessarily are attached to their phone all the time and reply right away. So why, why am I sitting there with my email open and the moment something comes in, I reply? Right. Why? Yeah. My phone goes into do not disturb during certain mm-hmm. hours. And if you send me an email, I'm not going to see it. And, you know, if if I'm free and I happen to check my email, I might reply, but only because then I may forget to come back and reply later. <laughs> but uh, generally, I'm not going to reply in those off hours, in those off times. And I'm going to go, you know, these are my working hours. Uh, I, I work yes. with a, I have a travel agent that plans some of my travel for me and she has it in her email um, signature. Mm-hmm. I work this hour to this hour unless it is a travel emergency. Which can happen, especially yeah. after COVID and everybody getting back into yeah. the regular. And so she will, she will respond to you during a travel emergency. She also will tell you that her response time when you're planning your travel is sometimes a little slower because she's working with those that are currently traveling. Yeah. For those who are on a trip and do need something that are having a travel emergency, she's going to drop everything for them first, which she should. But she teaches her clients from day mm-hmm. one, I work here to here. Yep. I do not work the weekends. I do not work the, you know, so you know right away. Setting boundaries and setting clear. And it makes it makes it also easier for our clients. Mm-hmm. So we are we are not just business connected, we are also personal connected. And I know, for example, in prepping for this, I was like, Julie, I want to have you on. Let's get you on the on the recording schedule. But I didn't have her information yet. As you guys know, I run my whole through ClickUp and get the bio and get the headshot and get all the stuff. And I had just messaged you, I think, I don't know if I sent you that through text or Facebook Messenger. And one of those days I was like, I shouldn't do that. It should be in her email ready waiting when she is working and taking care of shit like this. I shouldn't be having that just in a text message. Yeah. And I literally just send it over to her business email. So she has it waiting there when she's got a minute to send me over her information. So it it allows us between saying, hey, these are the hours I'm working or um, like one of my past guests mentioned, it's like, if you need me, you better not pop into my DMs. You better email me. That's my way of doing it. Yeah. It's not just setting boundaries of how we want to work. It also allows our clientele and our team members to know exactly what to do and how. Yeah. It makes their life easier too. Yep. Yeah, that's like, exactly it. You know? If, you, if you're upfront with how you're going to run your systems and your processes mm-hmm. and let those who need to know, know, you know, you're going to let your new clients know yep. and your existing. But if you let the new ones know the second they're prospecting to be a client, before they're even a client, if you let yep. them know, then they've got it all. So they're going to know, okay, I'm looking for somebody that I can message 24-7 
No, I can't message them 24 seven. So they're not, you're not the right fit for each other. And that's okay. Yeah. Not even my friends get to message me 24 seven. My phone goes into sleep mode at 10 30. If you message me after only because I looked at the phone, I might see it. Yeah. But other than I, that, I think mine goes to sleep before that. But yeah, mine's pretty early. I'm like, good night. I, I end up on the <laughs> single in San Diego. I end up on the couch texting with people. So I'm like, I, I literally just have it on sleep the moment I go to bed. But it, there is also, guys, for everybody that might not be quite as technology nerdy as we are, putting your phone on a regular sleep mode like that or like busy mode doesn't mean in an emergency people can't reach you yes i had a friend for example that went out of gas and got stuck on the side of the road with dumbasses driving by with 120 miles per hour having said that because she called me twice right after each other the phone knows nobody just calls you multiple times right mm -hmm. after each other they only do that when they need to get a hold of you right which means it goes past that sleep setting so there you go, guys. If you didn't know that, it really makes it that simple. So you do not have to be afraid that your child can't reach you or that your mom can't reach you. That is all the right there. Yeah. Just have you them can also program times. certain numbers to bypass. Yeah. So my son's number, my husband's number, my parents' numbers, they're set to bypass that sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, you already mentioned a couple of tools. Um, what are some of your daily tools that you're using? You already mentioned Notion that you were using for your content calendar. Yep. Yeah, so Notion Agora Pulse for scheduling everything yep. out and managing all of our comments. Um, we use Asana for our internal team. Oh, yeah. StreamYard hopping, really, guys. Oh, no, it's all good. It's not you, but I'm like, I'm, call I'm calling out Hoppin and StreamYard. I know. Asana, come on. I know. It was all set up so long ago. I, I think, good Lord, I couldn't even imagine trying to move 300 people off of there. Yeah. yeah. Moving, was, moving corporate project management tools is, yeah, it's not an easy undertaking. But was, again, as, as everybody knows that has been listening for a while, the right tool is the one you actually use and – I'm, I'm always, as long as it works for the company, as long as it works for the team and you are not having major issues, go with it. But no, you know me, I have yeah. to. <laughs> you do. I have to. And, and you know, I, I think that if it wasn't so ingrained yeah. uh, and if we were a smaller team, we would have 100% considered swapping. But yeah, when you got multiple entities and that, that's a whole nother mess. <laughs> um. <laughs> And then for helping write out content, I love Jasper AI. I knew it was coming because we all love Jasper. Yeah, we all love I that. absolutely love it. It simplifies so much. And, and, you know, anybody who's written social media copy, you get kind of in this rut where you're like, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know yeah, how you don't to talk about this out. Or you realize like your last four posts all sound the same and you're like, mm -hmm. Okay, wow. I I clearly need like to branch my voice out here a little <laughs> because you do. You just get to writing so much and so yeah. much that you kind of get in this rut. And so I will know my framework. I'll kind of know my outline of what I want. I'll go throw it into Jasper and let it spit out some prompts uh, and give me some other ideas. And then I can take those and I never just copy what they give me and paste it. I take what they give me and then I modify it to our brand voice. So it is still our words. It's still our brand voice, but we just had that assistance in getting some yeah. ideas. Um, and I'm like, everybody, everybody that has been around me knows I process information by talking. One of the reasons I'm doing my podcast as a guest show because I have somebody to talk to. I'm like, my head is so full with information. I don't know where to take you. Right. And with that, I've been struggling, admitting this here publicly, I've been struggling with my YouTube in general because I have realized that I'm focusing on way to higher level where it's like my, a lot of my audience doesn't even know yet they have a problem. They don't know what their problem is. So I've been struggling in my head being stuck in a certain way of doing things 
to to get to the point of where my audience is right now and that's perfect where where jasper comes in where i literally just go in there I start typing a couple of sentences and then I just like, give me a couple topics, give me a couple questions for this. You literally can go into Jasper and say, give me a how to blog post or give me five headlines about this or give me 10 questions about this. And you can just have Jasper come up with ideas and then work with that. Yeah. God sent. Yeah. Or you can take something you've already written and say, improve this. And it will rewrite it and just tweak the wording and change the few things that you're going, oh, that was so much better. Mm -hmm. I love the explain it to a fifth grader one. Oh my God. Yes. Because when we get so nerdy, I know that. I know that. I'm yeah. I'm so freaking nerdy. Seems where like it's break like it down a few levels. <laughs> can we can we just lower this for people to actually understand what the hell I'm talking about? Yes, yes. Especially when it comes to tech, and especially when it comes to a lot of marketing lingo. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. One thing I also love doing is when we turn the podcast into a blog post and all the things, right? So when, when it's getting published as a podcast, you need a short little description for the podcast. I literally just take the clean up the uh, transcription that my VA has taken care of, plug it into Jasper and then tell Jasper, Hey, write a roundup for this or two sentence, short little description. And it does that for me. And I don't have to think about how to, have this perfect hook intro for the podcast. I'm like, exactly. Yes, just but go take care of it. Yep. Go take care of it. It's so great. Um, I also use Descript. And yes. I love that one. Yes. Uh, so for anyone who has not experienced Descript, you should go try it immediately. I can take, you know, we do obviously at StreamYard a lot of live shows, a lot of mm-hmm. video content. Uh, so we can take that content, put it into Descript, get the whole transcription. I can grab clips out of there to repurpose into places very quickly and easily. Um, But I can turn it into audiograms. I can then repurposing that content for a blog and take that transcription. And now I can move that transcription over to Jasper and get Jasper to take my live show and make Mm -hmm. it a blog. So it's, it's kind of, you know, getting these tools that also are individual tools, but now you can use them together and really make magic. And guys, if you are interested in those workflows, I actually have some of those as videos on YouTube. So because Julie and I, we we follow similar workflows and process that when it comes to content creation, I do exactly the same thing. And with that, I know we could speak and chat for hours, but I should send her back to stream yet. you got a couple of things coming up too. A whole bunch of launches are going on. So guys, if you want to know what's happening over at stream yet, especially if you are a live streamer or podcaster yourself, I know there's a couple of really, really nice features coming out and some really great features that already did come out. Yes. So keep an eye on stream yet. Keep an eye on my channel. I will be talking a lot about stream yet too and how we make it really easy to turn live video into a podcast, turn it into an audio cast, get it out there, repurpose things, do all the things. Julie, where can people find you? I am at social jewels, J-E-W-E-L-S-I-C-T, everywhere. (laughs) So on all the socials, you can find me at that handle. And as you know, guys, links will be in the description too. And if you didn't get that right, you also can just stalk stream yet because you will see her there. You'll find me everywhere. Uh, I'm in the Facebook group for StreamYard, the StreamYard community. Yep. That's Julie for you right there. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Julie, for joining me. And I'll see and hear you in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye.